I'm not gonna finish half the time, this is over. Well then you have to take it with you. <laughs> Good evening, I'm clinically depressed! <laughs> Disgusting Stargate. <laughs> <laughs> caught me off guard with that. Anyway, <laughs> season four. Season four. One of the best seasons, I reckon. I don't know. If we, yeah. We said that already. It's got like a. The Nox mm. uh, upgrades. This one, I think they go to. Um... No, was it season three that they went to hell? Oh, it might be this season. Yeah, with Apophis returning again. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> which which I think was done anyway. Anyway, that's, yeah, that's, yeah. that's different stuff. Yeah. This episode can be summarized <laughs> as another reason that. Uh, humanity gets skimped out of getting new technology. Right? Yeah, <laughs> it is a continuing trope for the old. <laughs> we'll give you new technology. Moving the goalposts. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but in saying that, it's really great. Yeah, yeah. So we open with a rather sad, ominous sequence mm. of Carter at the SGC once again. She's sleeping there. She doesn't have a home life. <laughs> And he goes like, what are you doing here, man? Do you ever go home? Like, no, I'm all alone. <laughs> and then, yeah, they're getting these messages and they realise that these people are trying to contact them for the first time and they've been sending three people through. <laughs> yeah, they've been sending people through to hit the... Hit the... Yeah, who have not made it. Don't <laughs> splatter on the iris. There were four off-world activations prior to this one and the iris was closed the entire time. How many impact events did the computer record? Three. So, three dead. Yes, sir. I'm gonna go look up your Rhonda. Then we get communications from this planet. And yeah, it's old uh, Renee Abu Duju. Who long? <laughs> Odo. Odo. Yeah, well, you know, I obviously never realized that until I watched. Yeah, Deep yeah. Space Nine, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I looked up his uh, Wikipedia. He's done a whole bunch of voice work, and like mm. back in the day, television shows. He's got one like, of those voices, so I can well imagine that yeah. Being a thing. Yeah. Yeah, and he looks very unique and distinct, mm. even through all that hard makeup. You can completely tell it's him here. And yeah, his character had so much depth, and DS9 is probably the best Trek show out there. Oh, as far as, like I mean, is this a DS9 depth. tangent? It could be. It is, it is, it is excellent. DS9 yeah, 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 yeah. I watch, I love Next Generation. Yeah, Next right? Gen is great because it's iconic. And but the I love the political, sort of the more, the more grounded. Like mm. bringing it back from the high concept stuff, like the, the stuff with the, the, the Kardashians. And yeah, all it's this. far more complex. Yeah, 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 the, like, yeah. Stuff with the Klingons and the Federation going on. And then these shapeshifters are infiltrating everything. And the Kardashians. And you got all these other elements at play. Mm. It's nuanced and grey. It's not like... We're the Federation and we're fighting the Vulcans and they're evil. It's yeah, like, well, yeah. I mean, Cisco walks the line, right? Yeah, 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 absolutely. So, yeah, it's great to see him in this role. Mm hmm. The transmitting visual. How? Now you can see for yourself that we are kindred. We do. There is much my people have to offer in exchange for your help. If I could speak with you in person. We need to know more about this enemy you're facing. Have coexisted on this world for centuries. Their society is at the brink of desolation due to generations and generations of military conflict, and SGC decides they're going to help them out because they need tech. Well, it's all it's all a very slow burn, right? And I think yeah, it's executed. It I mean, it's all the the, the lead up to the final, uh, you know, gotcha moment. Yeah, essentially, yeah, yeah. it's all very 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 elegant. Right? Mm. It's like it's all there if you look at it. Yeah, it's a slow burn, and then on the second watch, you see all the little clues. Yeah, 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 yeah great. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so there's there is a there is a hell of a lot going on in this episode. Right? Yeah, that, yeah, that that sort of filters into the to the rest of the rest of the thing. Uh, one of the interesting things I really like, and this I've talked about the sort of military grounding, right? That actually elevates this show, like the 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 foundations being based on the US military, or at least yeah. an idealised version of it. Yeah. Um, 
you know, and the structure and all that sort of stuff. The, the, the concerns that get brought up about, like, the way that the sort of NATO and UN handles things, the way that, the lens that they look at things through, mm. right? Like uh, when uh, Hammond is saying, you know, oh, you know, we're not going to turn the tide of a war and, you know, yeah, there's a humanitarian yeah. we're not concern. Commit men and, yeah, moral thing going on. But, you know, if we can help, you know, there, there's we, we have an obligation. Yeah, and yeah. Then, yeah. Well, they got the looming threat of the fucking Jafar coming and then, yeah, it's just like you get to the thing and it's like they just want heavy water. Yeah. And it's like, Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 we can, we can provide. We're gonna that. give you like uh, fusion reactors and these, shield generation. Yeah, these drones and all this stuff, and all you want is heavy water. So okay, well, who cares about the moral obligation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. well, that all sort of goes out the window. Well, well, here, take the water. <laughs> well, they're they're under a lot of pressure, right? At this point in the series, they're under a hell of a lot of pressure, and that comes through. Yeah, the government has like I think already shut them down by this point in time because they're fucking just bleeding money for a cause that they can't understand. No. And the uh, fucking the looming threat of the ghoul coming to mm. wipe them out. Who have rocked up to Earth at least once by this point in time and fucked shit up. Heavy water. It's like regular water, sir, except the hydrogen nucleus contains two... I know what heavy water is, Major. And if that's what the Urandans need, we'd be happy to provide. In return, we can teach your people how to construct weapon systems such as ours. Aero fighters, stasis devices, uh, fusion reactors. Sounds fair. And then, yeah, so they're like, yeah, of course, you can have all the heavy water you want. It gives us all this health care and technology and energy. And Jackson, of course, is like, the squeaky uh, wheel. <laughs> well, no, 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 but okay, that's fine. But, you know, what What about this? And what about this? Yeah, and what, what about is this war? Why are you fighting? Yeah, Who are these other people? Who are they, you know? And yeah, old mate Odo is immediately shifting. He's like, well, you know, they started the war. Whatever. Yeah, what do you yeah, want? What yeah. do you want from me? <laughs> are you going to help us or not? Not, yeah. uh, and so can you just answer the question? Yeah, well, the, the, the whole is very tense, actually, uh, mm. sort of, because O'Neill just wants to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, no, no, no. And he's right in his own way, too. Like, mm, sure. Well, it, it's, it's funny because initially, mm. right, I can see, obviously, they're under a hell of a lot of pressure. Yeah. Right, the SGC, yeah. and O'Neill's under a hell of a lot of pressure. Yeah. But he can't see... He can't see the things that are wrong with the situation. Yeah, he's not that guy. You know, and there, there is a ticking clock, and for both sides, a ticking clock for both sides, which is really interesting. And so, yeah, he basically he basically says, well, no, Daniel's just doing his usual crap. Shut up. Yeah, shut up. Which, again, when I said there's lots of things going on in this episode, that's actually one of them, right? It's the, the continual formation of the relationship mm. between Daniel and O'Neill. Uh, mm, mm, mm. Where, uh, you know, at, towards the end of it, like, O'Neill's basically totally on board with Jackson. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. He acknowledges the role that he fulfills. Yeah, he's like, the, he apologises, actually, and he's like, you know, start asking more questions. Like, I thought you wanted me to stop. He's like, I, I was brash, and I apologise. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> do your thing. Yeah, yeah, which, which you know. Dig around. <laughs> yeah, which, which, which that's good. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's one of the first times we see it, because they're still... At this point, they're still clashing, and you know it's funny, right? Without Jackson, mm. things would be a lot different. Yeah, absolutely. Any member of the team, it'd all be fucking completely different. They work as one unit mm. and all yeah. function all other. He places. fulfills a vital role, which is essentially the moral compass and also the archaeological mm. aspect. Yeah. Until of he it. leaves, and Jonas does <laughs> the exact same thing. Jonas, the fucking. And then Jonas leaves, and Jack comes yeah, back. Yeah, Jackson comes back. <laughs> and... I have the exact same credentials as Jackson. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I like J no, Jonas. Yeah, no, Jonas. So, yeah. He came and went, and they yeah, forgot about him. I don't know. Jonas was in um, Charmed, I think he was. Yeah, probably. I think he was in Charmed. Yeah, yeah. he was the male warlock or whatever, or the, the yeah. angel or something. He was like an angel or something. He could heal people and stuff. That yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Nice. I think it was Jonas. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway. You ask questions. I, I thought you told me to. I know what I said, Daniel. It was rude, short-sighted, and I'm sorry. Well, thank you for recognizing me. Now I'm saying this. Go ask questions. Lots of questions. 
Yeah, so um, there's these unarmed fucking pods that they use, like drones, mm. to fight the other side. And yeah, there's this great reveal where O'Neill first gets into it. And I have to say that the sets and costumes all look pretty fucking I was good. Gonna, I was thinking that, so immediately when they first went through the gate, I was like, this is really great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. The, 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 Tall ceilings and... when the, Obviously, it's like a hallway. Right. Mm -hmm. But it could have easily been like a a, a bloody um, a map painting in the background. Or yeah, yeah, it wasn't. You know, it could have been like old school classic and been like painted plywood with like <laughs> bolts and riveted hand painted. Yeah, on. no, no, yeah. So I mean, the, and that's that's obviously a going theme through a, a good majority of Star Games. Yeah, so. and it has like this fancy feeling to it. Like they have like leather covered chairs and chandeliers and these big dining rooms, but it's all run down and then but, the tech but, is all like. Busted. Yeah, yeah, busted and wires everywhere and mm. stuff like that, but it's like super advanced and all this sort of stuff. Yeah, it's really interesting. A lot of thought and love went into the set yeah, creation yeah, for yeah, this. Yeah. All the props, like the neural things, right? Mm. The shield slides yeah, down. It's, and it's got all the wires and it's a big, huge apparatus. And they've got like the, the console that you swing around or yeah, whatever. Chair yeah, chair moves up. And yeah, just for this one episode, I mean, they could have repurposed some of it, I guess, but just for this one episode, it's pretty fucking good. It is really Considering good. Considering they're bashing at 22 episodes per season. <laughs> as well, yeah. not fucking eight. Uh, yeah, so O'Neill goes on this drone mission, destroys the enemy, and then there's this great reveal. He turns over to one of the other pilots, like, hey, we did a good job, eh? And he's just like, oh. Yeah, he's been, he's been messed up by the neural interface. Yeah, kind of thing. it does brain damage. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, it's just great that they tell O'Neill after he's yeah. done it. And he continues to sit in it. I think he gets it at like, Twice more? Yeah, oh no, once, once. He gets yeah. in one more time. Until yeah. gets in it as well. It's like, uh, he's pretty old, but I, I guess he's just at this just point. Just kills him. Just immediate, <laughs> immediate death. Just running the risk of brain damage. <laughs> <laughs> a little more brain damage won't hurt. But he, he gets a, yeah, he, he withstands a lot of brain trauma throughout. Throughout the show. Yeah. <laughs> the thing that puts all the information into him and upgrades. His and... brain's all like swelling and yeah. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Not bad. Bad for an old guy, huh? All the cream buns he eats by the end of the show. <laughs> <laughs> put up a picture, put up a picture of fat. Long head, uh, Richard Dance. Not again, stay! We love you, Richard, I'm sorry! <laughs> please, please let me touch you! I want a supernova or whatever. Please let me fondle your mullet, Richard Dean Anderson. He doesn't have a mullet anymore. He has to bat away all the dirty grease he knows. <laughs> He's just happy for the attention. Matlock. Someone loves him still. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so there's this uh, great, great unraveling of the reveal. It's funny, the um, trope here, it's always flipped in um, Next Gen. Next Gen, you're always presented with this ominous, evil alien. And, and they're then not. The reveal is, yeah, that they're kind-hearted and they're good, where SG-1's kind of the opposite. Which I guess is the normal trope. TNG was the one that always flipped it. The, oh, they're nice! Yeah. Roll credits, and you're like, what? It's still, it's still cliche, but it's opposite cliche. Yeah, right? yeah. It's, not, it's not something that you see that often. It's just a bait and switch. They just yeah, got yeah. the trope and just flipped it. Yeah, but I think it's, ha it's handled really well. Uh, yeah, so I mean, to... Essentially, right, it's the alternate universe on a different planet if Hitler... Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? It, it's an allegory for fucking Nazis, basically. <laughs> and it's not as blatant as I would have liked it. I would have liked them to, like, rip off their sleeves and their swastikas <laughs> and the camera zooms in. It's like, <laughs> Oh, fascista? We are Nazis, you know? We no like you. Till get out! <laughs> uh, yeah, so there's all these great little comments with, um... Odo's character with Tilk and it's like just you not drinking the alcohol yeah, yeah, yeah. All, all the ones. side glances and yeah, stuff yeah 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 then O'Neill because they got these mass stasis pods which is a great device for them not being able to leave yeah it's a good anchor anchor yeah for yeah, yeah, no yeah. just anchor. tying up all those like yeah plot holes yeah well why, why don't you do this and you know Jackson asks the questions mm. right why don't you do this why don't you do that yeah. and and ultimately like yeah Jackson is right you could just uproot and and leave, yeah. but it's an ideological thing. Yeah, yeah. Right? That's what it's about. It's yeah, not they about... don't want to take their people and start a new planet. They yeah. want their planet. Yeah, it's their planet. Uh, they, 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 they fucking gassed it and they want it yeah, back. Yeah, 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 they've been pumping. Yeah, yeah. Well, they're trying to fumigate the other people. Yeah, they're 
they tried to figure the breeders. Out the, yeah, well, the reveal, right? It's yeah. like why their big tunnel, uh, why their big <laughs> pipes that go out from yeah, the thing. Yeah, I mean, yeah. This thing must have been built. I you know, know, you're scrolling through the database. They're all the, the damn same. Yeah, yeah, they're all white, they're all blonde hair. <laughs> <laughs> it's eugenics. Sometimes we call them breeders. Breeders? How they reproduce indiscriminately with no regard for genetic purity. Really? So, basically, they, they come in all shapes and sizes? Yes. And colors? Yes. Yeah, well, uh, so I said to you, right, uh, Michael Shanks is a really great actor. Mm. You know, some of the moments he come, this episode in particular, he shines, I reckon. Yeah, Especially yeah. considering how early in the show it is. Mm -hmm. Um... Yeah, yeah. So you see, he finally gets a moment to talk with someone who isn't Odo, right? Odo yeah. seems to be a lot more able to sort of yeah circumnavigate the questions. The, you know, the, the fact that they're super racist, yeah, right? They talk around everything. Yeah, yeah. but this chick is, yeah. you know, she got no filter. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, 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 and and he's like, you know, oh yeah, you know, tell us about the the enemy and stuff. Oh, you know. Uh, you know, have they got a name? I'm American, my father's Dutch. And they're like, oh, sometimes we call them breeders. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they just procreate with no, like, um, <laughs> regard for uh, yeah. genetic purity. Genetic purity. <laughs> and he's like, and, and, oh. And the moment he asks a bunch of follow up questions, yeah, he's like, oh, so they, you know, they're all, they're all shade, they come in all shapes and sizes and yeah. colors. And it's like, and, just the way that he asks the question, it's mm. I don't know quite how to describe yeah. it. He's not directly like confronting her, but he's just getting he all got the it. information he, he needs. He immediately understood what yeah. was happening. Yeah. Right? And you can see it in the character. And then just confirms it hundred percent. With, with like, like with, right. with the with the right questions. Yeah. The, the questions that he understands he immediately twigs to yeah. to their point of view and he and he asks follow up questions that would seem totally normal to them. Mm -hmm. Right, you know, and then yeah, he's just okay. I yeah, get it. I know, I know what's happening. Yeah, I think yeah, and, um, <laughs> I think the narrative is kind of like a slave to the format of the the forty two minutes. It is, yeah, and yeah, he gets to the point and just like oh, they're racist, and all of a sudden they're just like oh, well, now we're fine with like killing them and destroying their race. Yeah, yeah, they have to wrap it up. Yeah, right? yeah. which is well, annoying. Yeah. That, that's the thing, you know, you got, I think that, uh, at the reveal, I think that eight minutes left of the episode. <laughs> it was eight minutes, the moment that, um, that Samantha twigs. Yeah, she's like, oh, you've been engaging <laughs> you, these you people. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, and then O'Neill, like, because it, it's kind of weird, because they're like, you're murdering these people, and it's not justified, and that's not right. But then they're just like, oh, you're racist? Well, we're gonna murder yeah, you. Yeah, we're, we're gonna kill you. All yeah. the people in the pods, presumably, like, children and whatnot. He yeah. flies the drone into that thing. <laughs> the main lady, she's like, ah! Well, also, there's no regard for, for their reaction when he goes in and fucking, like, starts escorting the enemy bombers and mm. shooting down all the other drones, yeah, yeah. right? And then, then this civilization is destroyed, <laughs> which is hilarious. But yeah, it's like, we've got eight minutes left. We can't do a complex, nuanced thing where we talk about education and racism yeah. and being closed-minded and put in a, <laughs> an SG team to, like, uh, revamp the society. Or do anything, you yeah, know. Have yeah. a p political upheaval. There, it, there was no, there was no, f after the initial reveal, there was no follow-up in whether or not um, there was anything that could be done other than just destroying them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? It's like, oh, they're racist. Oh, well, let's kill them all. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, and that's, uh, what, what, what you would expect is they would go in and they would say, oh, well, we don't agree with this and this is morally wrong and blah, 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 and they would just... Have a discussion. Well, no, but the, 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 the super racist would, like, double down. Mm. And they're ideologically yeah. driven, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, like, say, basically, you know, we're not going to give you other options. You're yeah. going to have to kill us or we're going to continue to kill these breeders. I wouldn't follow us if I were you. But yeah, as I said, the, the 42 minute uh, time frame is, is a tough one to tell beginning, middle and end every episode. I think they did. I think, I think they sacrificed the sort of nuanced conclusion for a, a nuanced reveal of it all yeah yeah by yeah. establishing it and giving us a nice slow burn i think that that was the sacrifice and mm. i think i think it pays off 
Mm. Yeah, absolutely. You know, again, like, well, there's a hell of a lot of episodes that are like that. Yeah, you know, the slow burn, mm, clues mm. here and there, and then you get to the reveal, and you're like, oh, that's great. Especially, again, as I said, in the early, like, episodes, once you get to uh, the Ori saga and stuff, oh, yeah. that all goes out the window, right? Yeah, it's yeah. all one They're totally. telling a through story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they still have a couple, like, uh, episodic missions here and there which is which is great but yeah it, it's all um, all right the the one where uh vala and actually no no that's the setup for them getting teleported and locked in the thing i was gonna say that oh the, the ship the, yeah the, the, no, no, to... the armband or whatever oh they're locked together yeah, yeah that's yeah. like the beginning yeah. episode it's like yeah. a couple but i don't think they're even memorable it's overall the narrative of the Ori. Yeah, it yeah. was like two or three. It was like, hey, we're on a little mission doing something else. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's um, I don't know. It's a really memorable episode. Again, as I said, it's this se- it's this season in particular. I think it's just well written. It's just yeah, it's tying up all those plot holes with you know the stasis pods, so they can't leave, and the gas, and then yeah, the slow trickle of information. Plus, we got a good guest star actor who's from one of another iconic sci-fi series mm. written by Brad Wright who was yeah the main guy main creator and main driving force with Robert C. Cooper. He still fucking in talks with MGM about doing something eh? I remember watching I remember watching the the web series when they tried to like, uh, they did like a test I guess it was a test to test the waters to see how yeah, it goes. Yeah, a really with it. cheap web series. And it was really weird. It wasn't Stargate. No, it, it wasn't was Stargate. Like, <laughs> it had no like consideration for continuity. It looked like garbage. It was poorly written. They got like unknown amateur actors. Yeah. It's like, yeah, why are you doing this? Like, <laughs> there were 200 episodes of SG-1 and like 100 and something of it's like, it's, Atlanta. It's like the fan base is out there, surely you know that. It's really interesting actually, because after watching, actually watching Stargate Universe, I don't think I finished it all. There's mm. only two seasons, right? Yeah, you yeah. didn't conclude it. But, things, but so. it's interesting that you say that, that uh, immediately the feeling that you get when you watch that web series, this is not Stargate. Yeah. And yeah, and yeah. it's intra. I, I wouldn't know how to really quantify what is Stargate, mm, right? Mm. Because you've got, to me, after watching Universe, after being put off on it, yeah. that is Stargate. Yeah, yeah. Atlantis yeah. is Stargate, but mm. really they're totally different. Yeah, they are very tonally different. Yeah, but yeah, a lot of the same writers. So yeah, maybe that's the the key element. Just oh, there's some. There's it's a bunch of things. It's going to be a bunch of things that same that, production company and you know it's a, it's what whatever it is that 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 you're watching it and your brain's telling you yeah this is mm. Stargate right yeah so I think yeah MGM have gone bankrupt a few times too. It's not like Netflix has the IP and Netflix is just like sitting on it. We're gonna throw oh, yeah, we're gonna throw everything a hundred yeah. million dollars at it. We're not even gonna think about it. We don't care. But like MGM, they have gone bankrupt and been brought out several times. So yeah, they're they're they're, 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 they're hesitant to lose more money on They're something. in multi layer executive hell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. They've been bought out. Who knows who owns the rights to whatever yeah, anymore, yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah. Who has the final They just state? need to sell the rights to fucking Netflix. Netflix. Yeah. Same well, with Amazon at the expense. Just give it to Netflix. We'd get, what we'd get probably is like a grittier, I mean, where would you even go with it though? Where would you even go with, like, you can't do Atlantis, that's not going to happen. Well, it, it's going to be like an amalgamation of characters from SG-1, Atlantis and Universe, and then obviously they can't wrap up Atlantis or Universe, because that was like a decade ago, yeah. and then uh, something else is happening, I don't but, know. But no, it, it, but they've got, the, pro- the problem is, is that now you're talking about technology creep. Mm, right, because mm. at the end they've got the Asgard technology, like all the yeah, Asgard technology. Yeah, be like a thriving metropolis of yeah. like high well, sci-fi stuff, yeah, well, which would be great. But you'd have to give it. Well, they wouldn't do that. They'd have to give us a reason why they've gone back to. I hated that in fucking the new Doctor Who. They'd always come down yeah, and like the aliens yeah. would be like. Ooh. But then, like after ten seasons of like Earth just interacting with aliens, they always needed to reset it. Yeah. They couldn't start influencing the planet and change it, and you'd be like, "Oh, everyone forgot about the aliens," because it just needs to be our modern day Earth. Exactly yeah. The same. yeah. Yeah. Well, it's like um, I mean, they show even in one of the the Who episodes the, of the the in the beginning of the new seasons, mm. right? Um, season three or something. Yeah. Of the new stuff. Uh, they even show like uh, Earth in like a, a thousand years or something. Yeah, and it's high sci-fi. Yeah, it's like, like high sci-fi. Cats, people, uh, hybrids and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. 
I don't know. So yeah, no, I don't know. I don't know that they could actually go anywhere with it. I mean, there's stories to be told. I mean, you could get a good rider to come in. I mean, like, you could. You could do that. I, I mean, what's Tilk doing now? Like, he could be doing something. <laughs> well, uh, Universe kind of did that, right? They mm. kind of said, okay, well, how do we... You'd have to get away from it all, right? Yeah, you can't. Or else you've got a bunch of questions that you have to answer. Yeah. I mean, there's a way to do it. Like, fucking Twin Peaks is a good example. Because they're like two seasons, which is like a, a soap opera parody in the 90s. And then, like... 25 years later, season 3 comes out, and it's like, yeah, they did it perfectly. It's like, we're doing a new thing, we got all the same characters, and then we'll slowly address all the loose ends we didn't tie up later on with, like, dialogue and stuff. I think, I think that there is a difference, like, in that, you know... Nah, that nah, nah, get David Lynch to come <laughs> back and do Stargate. But... <laughs> That'd be gold. It'd be just like Dune! Um... <laughs> It's like, again, uh, I think the technology thing really would, would mess it up, right? The, 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 the main MacGuffin has always been the technological superiority of everybody. Yeah, that's true, that's true. Right, it's like, it's like and uh, at the end, the the Ori are... Destroyed. Well, but they're like super ascended, right? Or they're, mm. they're ascended and their technology reflects, is like ancient technology, yeah, yeah, essentially. Yeah. The, the replicator... Uh, Originals from from Atlantis. Yeah, yeah. they're uh, uh, ancient technology. You know, mm. you, you need to. It's literally just about saying, okay, what's the next level that becomes a threat now, right? Yeah, or well, maybe it's just like a dark, gritty, like character drama between Tilk and his son. <laughs> Tilk's not coming back. You gotta get Christopher Judge back. Get right. Will Smith. <laughs> to play <Tilk. laughs> Yeah. Well, no, what Brad Ryan said is like, it's gonna like have, it's gonna be an amalgamation of characters from all that, and new characters presumably, and I don't know, tell some story. I just, I just don't, yeah, I just don't know what the world looks like. Yeah, well, uh, it's probably not gonna happen. No, I don't know, I know it's not gonna happen. It's been like, uh, the beginning, the beginning stages of like, it's not like it was announced we're doing this. It was announced that they're in talks. That was like three years that ago. That was a long time ago. They're still in talks. <laughs> they can't just be like, okay, here's money. The only reason that it ever comes back is because of the, the, the perceived notion of an inbuilt fan base. Right? That's why Star Trek came back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Star Trek Discovery. I mean, who's doing Star Trek Discovery? No, but like who? Who? I mean, it's not Netflix. Right? Uh, CBS and Star Trek. Okay, yeah. I just don't know. I just don't. I just don't think. I just don't think it would be narratively viable. Mm, I don't know. I mean, tell a story. I don't know what that. I story mean, you is. could. T you could tell. Well, they did tell a story in the web series. They told a story. <laughs> <laughs> they did tell a story, you're right, you're right, you can't tell a story. <laughs> <They're> like, <laughs> it just wasn't a very good story. But it's like season 9 and 10 where they're just like, oh, alright, let's start a new story now. And but, it's like, the alright. But that that was the, 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 they had a bar and mm. they pushed it all the way to the mm, bar. Mm, mm. But right? yeah, it doesn't necessarily even need to be like a... Well, it wouldn't be like fucking SG-1, right, where it's serialized. It'd be like The Expanse, or it's like this big, like, slow drama about this problem. Like, tonally, it would be completely different. It wouldn't be Adventure of the Week. That's fine, that's, uh, I know. And it'd, it'd be ten episodes. And... But imagine it, right, imagine it, so... I'm a mad if, 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 if it's about, if it's about Earth, to some degree, right, you'd, and it's in space, you're talking about them having a bunch of Asgard ships, right? Mm-mm-mm. I mean, well, presumably is... Earth has like started like colonizing Mars yeah, and yeah. spreading out through the universe. But yeah, I mean, yeah. and then and then, but then the is stinger, it stop... the stinger at the end of the episode, something's happening. Ah, it's another super gay. Well, no, no, no. <laughs> is it Stargate then? If they're if they're, if they're not using the gates. Yeah, if they're not using because they're not using the gates, right? They're they're yeah. traveling across uh, the galaxy yeah. in fucking Asgard ships. Don't know. I mean, you're telling the story. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, it was a good episode. <laughs> never coming back. The good days are, let's just let it, let's just let it die. I mean, that's better than doing the Star Trek thing, like, I'm fucking trudging up. That's I'm what it would be. Part. Well, no, but the problem with that is, though, that it's written by people who haven't even watched no, Trek. No, like, no. this is helmed by the guy who made this episode so great and made the entire... and wrote and created the series. Yeah. 
And he has like come out and said a bunch of things. He's like, we can't just dis- dispel continuity. It's got to feel like yeah, it yeah, comes yeah. after. Yeah. So if if they gave him the opportunity, I would have faith that he'd be able to do something interesting. Was J.J. Abrams ever like a person who watched Star Trek? I assume he would have been. J.J. Abrams is a good director, but he's not a good writer. That like, first Star Trek movie is really yeah, great. I know, but it's not written by him. That's true, yeah. He's a great director. He yeah. knows how to direct action, but he, he shouldn't touch a pen or a fucking pad of paper ever. He did, He tried his hardest to rescue them, but <laughs> <I> fucking didn't. <laughs> Uh, but but yeah, even like that, it's like it, it's a very surface level like Star Trek. Like if you watch, sit down and watch the original series, like the films oh, no, yeah. are cheap caricatures. They're yeah. not like you know, Kirk had depth and he had nuance, oh, and then no, the no, movie no. he's like punching and <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, good night. Good night, Steve. <laughs> I said good night to them. And it's daytime. It could be night where they are. That's what I'm the, saying! Where's, you know, that one person is watching, Belinda. Did she watch the Stargate one? Nah. Right. Richard Dean Anderson. Oh.